Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Ablio Costa, and in this video I'll be talking about uh, the other genotoxicity and mutagenicity tests in continuation from the previous video. In the previous video we spoke about the AIMS test and the bacterial reverse mutation assay and in this video I'll be talking about some in vitro mammalian tests such as mouse lymphoma assay, the HPRT gene mutation assay, the sister chromatid exchange assay, the chromosomal aberration test, the cytokinesis block micronucleus test, and the single cell gel electrophoresis assay. So the first test which we're going to talk about is the mouse lymphoma assay. And this is an in vitro test because we are going to be culturing the mouse lymphoma cells. So specifically this uh, line of uh, the lymphoma cells that is L5178Y, we are going to be using these uh, cells and uh, what is special about these cells is that they have an altered uh, thymidine kinase gene that is the TK gene which is required for salvage pathway of uh, synthesis of uh, the nucleotides. So if you can see uh, the gene that is TK which is abbreviated as TK if it is having minus minus means they are having a non-functional uh, thymidine kinase uh, gene so they will not be able to phosphorylate thymidine in the salvage pathway so the salvage pathway is the one in which there are already some precursors of the nucleotides and those precursors will be getting converted into the nucleotides as you can see in case of a uh, thymine so the thymine will be uh, which is going to be taken up in the diet will be getting converted into thymidine with the help of some enzymes and thymidine gets converted into tmp that is a uh, thymidine mono uh, phosphate and then that will be then utilized for DNA biosynthesis and so this particular enzyme that is TK is very very important in the conversion of thymidine into TMP which will then be used for DNA biosynthesis. So if TK is faulty that it is not going to be functional then this thymidine will not be able to be converted into TMP and so then the DNA will not be able to be synthesized via this particular pathway that is a salvage pathway. There is another pathway called the de novo pathway by which uh, the cells can utilize, uh, the cells can make their own DNA without any precursors being required. So they will utilize maybe uh, some other biomolecules uh, for which uh, they can synthesize DNA from there. So they can make use of the de novo synthesis pathway uh, if uh, their uh, TK is not going to be functional. That is their thymine kinase, thymidine kinase is not going to be functional. So cells with and without the functional thymidine kinase that is uh, the TK plus minus TK plus plus or even TK minus minus they can use the nucleotide de novo synthesis pathway as I already told you. So uh, there, just like in the AIMS test there are some chemicals which can convert these functional the functional thymidine kinase into a uh, uh, a negative form that is it can convert the functional thymidine kinase into a non-functional thymidine kinase so there are some uh, chemicals which can do this and so that's why this particular test is done to see whether some chemicals can convert this uh, the functional thymidine kinase into a non-functional thymidine kinase so if that particular substance is mutagenic that we want to test then uh, we will be able to see the loss of this thymidine Kinase. So then what do we do? How do we then see whether we are getting our desired results of uh, mutagenicity? So uh, the mutants, what, they, uh, what is special about them is that they have an acquired resistance to this particular analog of thymidine that is trifluorothymidine. So trifluorothymidine is an analog of thymidine that is it resembles thymidine but if the DNA takes up TFT that is trifluorothymidine, the cell dies. Okay, so this particular uh, analog uh, TFT which resembles thymidine if it is taken up by the DNA during the process of replication the cell dies. Okay, so you will not get the formation of uh, cell colonies if the cell has taken up this uh, trifluorothymidine. Alright, so uh, by looking at this you can see that uh, 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 only cells which are having a functional thymidine kinase will be able to convert the thymidine into TMP. So if thymidine is there or even an analog of thymidine is there, it will be able, uh, thymidine kinase will be able to convert it into TMP and then will be utilized for DNA biosynthesis. So if a functional TK is there, whatever thymidine is present or any analogs of thymidine are there, they will be getting incorporated into the DNA. So if this lethal form of thymidine is present, that is trifluorothymidine is present, TK can actually 
use it to in get incorporated into the DNA and if so the cell will undergo cell death okay so if there's no functional uh, thymidine kinase thymidine will never be utilized in this pathway that is the salvage pathway and even if uh, TFT is present thymidine kinase cannot do anything about it because it's not going to be functional and so DNA is never going to be synthesized by this salvage pathway but by de novo synthesis since thymidine is not required for de novo synthesis uh, the cell will be able to survive. So obviously cells which are not having any thymidine kinase can still uh, survive by making their own uh, making their own DNA okay and even in the presence of this lethal analog that is trifluorothymidine they will still survive. So the cells will be cultured in uh, this uh, TFT and uh, we will be able to see whether uh, the cells are surviving or not surviving depending on whether that particular substance the chemical that we were testing converts uh, the, uh, the, the normal functioning TK into a non-functional TK. Okay, so then you can see large size colonies being formed. So this indicates that you know the there are large number of, uh, of mutants being generated and so uh, these were able to utilize the uh, de novo synthesis and not be able to use the salvage pathway even though TFT is going to be present in this medium. The next test, the next in vitro test is the HPRT gene mutation assay which utilizes the V79 ch Chinese hamster ovary cells abbreviated as CHO and in these cells uh, they have one functional copy of the gene which codes for HPRT that is hypoxanthin guanine phosphoribosyl transferase which is very very important for DNA synthesis. Okay, so uh, you can see that they will have one functional copy and they will have a non-functional copy. So <clears throat> if a chemical is going to be exposed to these cells which is, uh, which is a suspected uh, mutagen, this particular uh, chemical if it is mutagenic will be able to uh, mutate that uh, the, the only active uh, HPRT gene. Okay, so I said one is, uh, there will be two copies, right? One copy will be inactive, one will be active. If the chemical is able to convert that uh, active uh, copy into an inactive copy, so it will be a mutated HPRT gene and uh, there will be a loss of uh, this enzyme that is hypoxanthin guanine phosphoryl uh, transferase. And again, this particular HPRT enzyme require, is uh, needed for the salvage pathway. Okay. So if uh, HPRT is not present, the, the cells do not utilize the salvage pathway, they go for the de novo synthesis. And uh, yeah, so what is the thing that will cause lethality over here is that there is a toxic nu a nucleoside analog that is 6-thioguanin, that is 6-TG. Okay, so this will be a to toxic analog which will be incorporated into uh, cells during uh, replication and this will be taken up during the salvage pathway. Okay, so HPRT will be taking up all uh, analogs of uh, the DNA, the 6th thioguanin will be obviously an analog of uh, uh, guanine. It will be taking it up during the salvage pathway and uh, once it gets incorporated into the DNA, the cell dies. Just as in the previous case, as we saw uh, uh, how uh, the, 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 the TK is uh, selecting for that toxic, uh, uh, toxic uh, metabolite. So in the same way, if it... Uh, if HPRT takes up this 6 thioguanin, it will cause the cell to die. Okay, But uh, in this case uh, of the mutated HPRT gene where both the genes will be mutated, the cells will never uh, go through the salvage pathway for synthesizing DNA, they will go through the de novo synthesis. Okay, So if that particular chemical what was initially exposed, the mutagenic chemical, uh, if it is mutagenic then it will can mutate that HPRT gene and it will allow the cells to proliferate via the de novo synthesis pathway but if that particular chemical was not mutagenic then the no mutations will be there so that HPRT gene will still be active it will make use of the salvage pathway and uh, to some extent the de novo synthesis but the salvage pathway it will take up that toxic analog of uh, the 6TG and it will get incorporated into the DNA that can cause the death of the cells. So in uh, in most cases they even use the, uh, the rat liver extract which is referred to as the S9 extract uh, because in case the chemical may be showing some other uh, metabolite which may be more toxic so that then can be tested for its mutagenicity. And uh, the next test uh, is the uh, sister chromatid exchange assay which is uh, a test 
to see whether uh, exchanges are happening between between sister uh, between uh, sister chromatids of a chromosome. Now, when uh, uh, when cells or when chromosomes are exposed to DNA damaging substances, there is a tendency of these, uh, especially in dividing cells where chromatids are being generated, sister chromatids are being uh, formed due to replication. There is a high chance of these sister chromatids breaking and exchanging their fragments with each other. Why this happens is not known, but we know that DNA breakage does occur in, with uh, as a result of exposure to chemicals. But in this case, in case of uh, replicating DNA, which which makes the sister chromatids, there is a high chance of breaking of these fragments of the chromatids, and they get exchanged with each other. So, in order to observe this, we can use a particular test, which is referred to as a sister chromatid exchange assay. And in, and indeed, when we use this test. And we find that this exchange is taking place. It the the chances are most mostly that this particular chemical that is causing these exchanges is going to also be genotoxic. Uh, that is, it can even cause other types of damages like you know uh, complete DNA breakage and fragmentation, ring chromosomes, etc. Okay. So uh, uh, what we make use of in this particular assay is a, a, a compound that we refer to as 5-bromo-2-deoxyuridine, abbreviated as BRDU or 5-BRDU, which is basically a thymidine analog. So it resembles thymidine. And if you remember in my pre in one of my previous videos, I had spoken about 5-bromo-uracil, uh, which is uh, which is an analog of uh, of uh, thymine. So this uh, BRDU is an uh, is a modified form or it's a converted form of this of uh, bromouracil where we get 5-bromo-2-deoxyuridine, uh, and we can use it in a sister chromatid exchange. Okay, so five uh, so BRDU when we add it to dividing cells, uh, the the dividing when the the dividing cells I mean to say when the replic when the cells are undergoing replication, it will take up the the nuclei will take up. 5-BRDU instead of uh, thymine and it will incorporate BRDU into its DNA okay and BRDU has a property in, in the sense that it it can show the pro, uh, it can show some type of fluorescence when UV light is incident upon it okay so we can easily make out the sister chromatid which has uh, taken up 5-BRDU because it will stain differently from the uh, from the parent DNA from the parent DNA so the sister chromatid will show a different coloration compared to the original uh, chromosome. Okay, so you can see that one chromosome may show one chromatid will show a yellow color and the other chromosome will show an orange color. Okay, so that indicates uh, one of the sister chromatids has been recently newly synthesized and it has taken up this BRDU. Whereas obviously the one from which the uh, the, the the template chromosome I would say will not have any BRDU in it because it has already in, it has already the original sequences of the DNA with the original nucleotides. Only in the newly synthesized uh, chromatid you will find BRDU because at that point of time where BRDU has been added when the cells were dividing. So we can make out in normal circumstances we can see one sister chromatid will be one completely one color that is either orange or yellow and the other one will be either completely yellow or orange. But in ex, uh, in uh, pres in the presence of a mutagenic compound there is going to be exchange that is the breaking of these fragments and they're going to be exchanged with each other so you can see an exchange of the sister chromatids which have taken place okay so this is an indication to say that the cells are being exposed to some uh, dna damaging uh, compound or some genotoxic or some mutagenic compound that has caused the exchange of these uh, uh, segments between the sister Chromatids and this can be easily visualized by using this uh, analog of thymidine that is BRDU. Simple procedure. It is just takes advantage of uh, you know being uh, closely resembling the thymidine and it gets incorporated in the DNA when the DNA is replicating. Okay, so then the DNA will be stained with a fluorescence dye that is hoxed three three two five eight and then by exposing it to UV light we are able to observe the uh, the DNA and then we can easily see the exchange fragments if it has taken place. Because of a uh, uh, because of a mutagenic compound. Uh, the other tests I'll talk about in my next video. Thank you.